Hello everyone, Truth Surge here again. Glad you could join us. If you're just tuning in, we're talking about Christian origins and uh, the Jesus myth theory in particular, uh, the Earl Doherty uh, version of it, not the zeitgeist or these other ones. Um, and uh, if you're just tuning in, you might want to check out the, uh, the other videos I've done so far. Um, in the first two videos that we did, uh, we saw that Jesus was believed to have been appearing on earth at the end of time rather than returning. In the, the video after that, we saw that Jesus was um, thought to have been killed at the beginning of time sometime around when the universe was created, not in the first century uh, on planet Earth, necessarily. So, uh, in this video, I'm going to show you something that uh, fits in quite nicely with the previous video. If Jesus was believed to be crucified or killed at the beginning of time, let's just say sometime around when the world was made, then he would have been the first person to exist, and I'm going to use person loosely here, being, person, being, the first person to exist, the first person to have ever died, and the first person to have ever come back from the dead. This is how the author of Revelation could call Jesus the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, because Jesus had preeminence in everything. He was the first. So Jesus would have been the first to, be, to exist, the first to die, and the first to come back from the dead. That doesn't fit with the uh, Orthodox view, because that view says that Jesus was probably the fifth or sixth person to come back from the dead, because Jesus himself raised Jairus' daughter and Lazarus from the dead before he raised from the dead. So, in the Orthodox view, Jesus was not the first person or the first being to come back from the dead. So far, we've just used our rational thinking about this first to come back from the dead idea. It does seem to fit, because if he was killed back then, he would have been the first to come back from the dead. He would have come back from the dead before anybody else, because nobody existed on the planet at that point. But you know me. I don't like to rely on simple pure speculation. Um, is there evidence in the early Christian writings that would support this idea that Jesus was, in fact, the first person to come back from the dead? Well, we need to do some digging. We need to find out. We need to see if there's anything in the early Christian writings that would support this idea. And if we do find it, it certainly would uh, fit together nicely with what we've seen so far. So, you got your shovel? You got your pick? Let's go do some digging. The 15th chapter of Paul's first letter to the Christians at Corinth could be called the resurrection chapter. Paul is defending the idea that dead people will one day be brought back to life at Jesus' end-time appearance on earth. So, if we're going to find evidence that Paul believed Jesus was the first to come back from the dead, this is probably a good place to look. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Well, we couldn't ask for much better evidence than this. In olden times, first fruits was a term that referred to the first batch of fruit, grain, or vegetable that was harvested and was often offered to the priest to then be offered to God. The term fallen asleep is a euphemism for the state of being dead. Paul is telling us that Jesus became the first dead person to come back to life, the first fruits of the dead. Another way of saying it is this, of all the people who had died up to Paul's day, Jesus was the first to come back to the land of the living. Three verses later, Paul repeats the same idea, but gives us an additional hint. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward those who are Christ's at his coming. In this verse, Paul says that there is a chronological order to who will be raised from the dead. He tells us that Jesus was raised first, then at Jesus' end time appearance, everyone else who had died throughout history who was also a follower of Jesus would then be raised from the dead. Jesus first, 
then the believers. He also seems to be saying that Jesus had to be raised from the dead first for things to be in their proper order. We've seen Paul tell us twice that Jesus was the first fruits of the dead. But can we find more evidence? Another early Christian document is 1 Clement. In his letter to the Corinthians, we see Clement of Rome echo Paul's belief. Let us consider, beloved, how the Lord continually proves to us that there shall be a future resurrection, of which he has rendered the Lord Jesus Christ the firstfruits by raising him from the dead. What a strange way to refer to a man who, according to the Gospels, was not the first to come back from the dead. Could we get lucky and find yet another piece of evidence that might even be stronger than the previous three we've just looked at? There is one other place in the New Testament where Jesus is referred to in a similar fashion, and we find it in Colossians. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. This is by far our clearest evidence yet. Not only do we see a similar phrasing, firstborn from the dead, but we see the reason Jesus had to be raised before anyone else. He had to have preeminence over everyone else. He had to be the first in everything, the beginning, existence, death, and the coming back from the dead. The only way that could have happened was if he had been raised from the dead long before any man walked the earth. A first century resurrection would be too late for Jesus to be the firstborn from the dead. A first century death would be too late for him to be first in everything. He would not have the preeminence over everyone else. If we are to believe the gospel story, this verse, as well as the previous ones we looked at, makes no sense. Another clue in these verses is the fact that the authors do not qualify their claims. The claims are straightforward and clear. They don't say, firstborn from the dead, to stay that way, for example. The problem is that most people are under the hypnotic spell of the gospel story and cannot shake it loose in order to read the epistles for what they say and not what the Gospels are forcing them to say. The author of Colossians is telling us that Jesus is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he would be first in everything. It doesn't get much clearer than that.